Welcome to On Our Shelf. Today what I have is a full review of the GoPro Hero 3 Plus Black Edition. And if you missed my unboxing video earlier, here it is again in about 20 seconds. And basically what you get in the box is a warranty disclaimer, a user manual, a quick start guide, three GoPro stickers, two USB charging cables, one for the actual camera and one for the actual Wi-Fi remote, a three-way pivot arm, one curved and one flat adhesive mount, a vertical quick release buckle, a quick release buckle, one battery for the actual camera itself, a Wi-Fi remote, a waterproof housing shell to house the actual camera, plus an extra back door that allows more sound to that housing, and the main piece of the pie, the Hero 3 Plus Black Edition camera itself. Now, as I was creating this review, I decided to gear it towards someone that's never actually used a GoPro camera itself. So let's start with the basics. This camera by itself weighs approximately 74 grams or 2.6 ounces. Now on the front of the camera, you have your power mode button, you have your Wi-Fi status light, which lights up blue. And you have your camera status light, which lights up red. You have your LCD status screen and the obvious lens itself. Up top, you have your camera status light, which lights up red. You have your shutter select button, and you also have a microphone. Now to the left, we have this removable door. And inside that door, we have a micro HDMI port, a mini USB port, and a micro SD card slot and they do recommend class 10 cards, by the way. On the bottom, you have another camera status light, which also lights up red. To the right, we have a Wi-Fi on and off button and an audio alert tone. On the back, we have a hero port, and we also have a release trigger to release the battery housing door. Inside that is the actual battery, and all the actual you know OEM batteries come with a little pull tab. You can just pull that tab, and the battery comes out pretty easy. Now, when you turn the camera on for the first time, you're greeted by three beeps. Now you're probably asking yourself, this is a pretty expensive camera. How am I supposed to navigate through all the features on this little bitty LCD? Well, this is how you do it. There's another way also, but I'll show you that later on. But yes, every feature on this camera that you need to access, you have to use the shutter button and the power mode button. You have to nav navigate between those two to go to your menu, select, exit out, back up. And it does take a little while to get used to, especially to know all the menus. But after a while, you become a pro at it. Go pro. But as far as basic functions go, when you're taking a picture, it does it simply like this. And when you're recording video, it looks like this. Now you're probably asking yourself, with all the different types of videos that you've seen these things shoot, how do the accessories work? It seems like it can be pretty complicated. There are a ton of accessories that go with these GoPro cameras and how do all the housings and all the clip-ons, how does all that stuff work? Well, that stuff's all pretty simple too, and I'll give you a quick example of how some of it works uh, using the included housing that came with it. So what you're looking at right here, this particular housing is the waterproof housing. And this is like the main case you wanna put your GoPro in when you're going to shoot certain things. You don't want it out in the open. Uh, it's for example, if you're like um, skiing or you have it on a skateboard or you have it outside of a car, because it's kind of a shockproof style case and it's very protective. Now they do sell a housing that's just the frame. It doesn't have all this plastic stuff around it. And I would say that frame will be used for adventures that aren't as risky. Now, as far as how do you attach the uh, camera housing to all the different mounts and accessories, it's pretty simple. You see those holes right there? Um, every housing has a kind of sort of similar piece and you just pretty much uh, push it in, match the holes up, and then you stick the screw through and you just give it a twist to tighten it up. And that's how pretty much all the housings are attached. And they all have a nice tight fit especially the ones made from GoPro. And when using the quick release buckles, it's just as easy. They all have these little squeezy toggles things right here, whatever they're called. And you just simply slide those into place and they lock in and then you squeeze them again to uh, pull it out. Now, as far as the remote goes, it connects to the camera via Wi-Fi, and you can control everything on the camera through the shutter button and the power mode button. But my favorite way to access the camera controls is through the GoPro app, which you can get in the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store. And it's 100% free. And it's very easy to connect. It takes about probably, I wanna say 30 seconds. And once you got it connected, you can see how amazing it is because basically you can access all the controls that you can do with the normal remote, but it gives you a much better visualization of how it actually looks. Which in my opinion, allows you to be more efficient, especially when you're trying to access different camera controls and go through settings. This seems like a very fast way to do it. 
Here's an example of me using the GoPro app to change settings on the actual camera. As you can see, it actually previews on the camera itself in the LCD screen. Now, GoPro claims that this new GoPro has a 30% longer battery life than the previous GoPro Hero Black Edition. And from what I can see, it is an improvement, but I can tell you this, it's still not enough. And if this is your first time buying one of these cameras, you might want to bring a recharger with you or some extra batteries because these things burn through batteries fast, especially when you're using the Wi-Fi feature. The image quality is also supposed to be 33% sharper than the last GoPro Hero 3 Black Edition. And unfortunately, I didn't have a GoPro Hero 3 to compare to. So I looked at some comparison videos online and read some reviews. And for the most part, most folks are saying that they do notice a little bit of a sharpness, but not a huge difference at all. So there is some credibility to that 33% sharpness claim. GoPro also claims that this camera is 33% smaller than the previous Hero. Um, that's not exactly true. The camera itself is the same size as the housing that's actually smaller. This camera also features a new auto low light mode, which is a pretty neat feature to have. So when you go into low light conditions, you don't have to go in and manually change um, settings yourself. Um, however, the image quality itself doesn't seem too much better in low light situations. I noticed a big difference in the actual quality itself. But you can determine that yourself when you look at some of the video footage I'll show you later on. And they're also saying that this particular camera has improved audio. Now I've been told by some people that actually have owned the Hero 3 Black Edition and that own the new one, that the wind reduction noise that they have noticed a pretty big difference in wind reduction. So that seems like something that we can kind of go off there. But you just have to watch the clips to determine yourself if you think it's better or not. Now with all that being said, here are all the different type of video modes that you can shoot in with the GoPro Hero 3 Plus Black Edition. Um, I will tell you this, all my videos that you're about to see were shot in 1080p Super View with maybe the exception of the ones that I shot at night in low light situation because I had auto low light, uh, I had that toggle on. So I think it was still in 1080p, but I believe some the frames per seconds might have changed or something like that. I'm not quite sure. I need to do some more research on that. But uh, it was all shot in 1080p super view. So here's the footage right here and enjoy. And there's a few scenes where I had the waterproof housing on. So you, it doesn't allow that much sound to go through. Like for example, this scene right here. So I should have had the, the other uh, housing on. So that's why it's not that loud.
So overall, this is a great camera and it is as versatile as they say it is. The only problems I ran into, and I guess these are suggested improvements, is battery life. I think they can make the battery last a little bit longer or make the camera more efficient with the way it uses the battery. But with that being said, they do have bigger batteries that you can put in these things to make them last longer. And overall, they did improve over the last model. So we gotta give them credit for trying. Also, low light situations. It's not bad and it's definitely better than a lot of other cameras. But I used this camera to shoot a scene in a haunted house and it was just too dark in there. Now it was very, very dark, but the footage didn't come out too great so I didn't even put it up. And to be honest, I don't know any other cameras that would have shot good footage in that type of darkness anyway. So, well, no cameras at this price range. So overall, this is a great camera and GoPro is known for making great cameras. If you have a GoPro 3 and you use it on an everyday basis, I would consider upgrading. But if you have a 3 and you use this thing like once every month or two, I surely wouldn't upgrade. And keep in mind, they have three bundles. They start at $199 and they go up to $399. So that's been a review of the GoPro Hero 3 Plus Black Edition. Take care. I will see you guys in our next video. And thanks for watching.